Stephen Freed, and Life on Maui wish to thank the following sponsors for helping to make this show possible. Adele O'Neill, Certified Nurse Midwife. Adele provides excellent prenatal care and GYN exams at Maui Medical Group. Please call for more information. And to Dr. Harold Bloomfield, New York Times best-selling author of such books as Making Peace with Your Parents and How to Survive the Loss of a Love. Mahalo to these fine sponsors. Welcome to Life on Maui. My name is Stephen Freed. I've been thinking lately what incredible guests that I get on this show. And I have a natural inquisitiveness about what it is that makes people tick. What's their underlying motivation? So whether I've had on a rabbi or a belly dancer or a psychiatrist or a master drummer, for me, it's always wanting to know, it's like, what motivates somebody? What is it that really gives people the juice to do what they do? And today is no exception. My guest for today is Joe Marshalla, and he has written this book, which he calls An Owner's Manual for the Human Mind. The name of the book is Repeatlessness, and it's an absolutely fascinating book. So, welcome to the show, Joe. Ah, well, thank you. Ah. Really glad to be here. Me too. Really, just an honor. Mm. An honor. So, to start off with, what does repeatlessness mean? Well, repeatlessness has a lot of different ways in which it can be used. Mm -hmm. Not only is it a noun, it's an adjective as well. So, it describes something, but it also is a motion. Okay. Hmm. What's that mean? And well, repeatlessness refers to what I call the law of repeatlessness. We have certain laws in our universe here. The law of gravity is one of them. The law of repeatlessness is based on the idea that there are no two moments, no two experiences, no two atoms, no two anything that are ever exactly the same. Life is in a constant evolutionary co creative, dynamic experience where everything is constantly growing and changing. Therefore, life is, in and of itself, a state of repeatlessness. Hmm. No two moments alike. No two, no no two, two anything. No two raindrops alike. No Nothing. two, yeah. And so, I mean, and the only place where repeating occurs, or, or appears to recur, is through the perception of our minds. Hmm. But it's not true. Hmm. It can't be. Hmm. It's not physically possible. So I want to delve into that some more later, but um, I'd like to find out. You have had a few death experiences during your life. You call them near-death experiences, but for all intents and purposes, they're death experiences. Yeah. Uh, most recently, just several years ago, but uh, your first was at 13 years old. That's correct. Would you describe, this is amazing to me, would you describe the uh, circumstance, the car accident, describe what happened? Okay, I, I was riding my bike home. 13 years old. I was 13 years old. I was riding my bike home, and in order to get home, I had to cross a highway. And so I looked to the left, looked to the right, saw that I could drive, you know, cross the street. There was a car coming. And as I crossed the street, what I did not realize is that this highway, there, there, that there was a car passing the one that I had cleared. Mm. And that car was doing approximately 70 miles an hour or so, mm. according to the driver. Well, um, that car actually broadsided me on my bike. I flew 75 feet in the air and then apparently rolled another 50 feet because according to the police report, I had traveled 125 feet from the scene of impact. Mm. Um, the car was all dented in, my bike was mangled, and uh, I stood up and walked away completely unscathed. And How in fact, with the emergency, with the emergency workers, right, 
when I finally, because I actually stopped in my role, I mean, it's, it's a long story, but I actually s stopped sitting kind of Indian style and laid over my legs. And when I came back into my body and I stood up, one of the witnesses actually fainted. And the emergency workers went to go deal with her. Here, I'm the one. I just got hit. <laughs> you know, 70 miles an hour, <laughs> thrown 75 feet. Whoa. Roll another 50 feet. And then, and so um, it was an extraordinary experience. And from the time that I was actually hit by the car to the time that I actually came back into my body really was approximately maybe, you know, 10 or 15 seconds. But for me, that 10 or 15 seconds seemed like more than hours, almost days worth of time in this timeless space that I experienced. And so it was, it, it, what, what was the incredible process was when I came back into my body and the world started back up. Mm -hmm. And my bike went flying by me and the car drove around me and sound came in and light came in and mm -hmm. all of the various planes of reality came in. Um, I had a real difficult time trying to understand what had just happened to me. And I, I really, I couldn't find anyone uh, to talk to about it. You know, when I tried, when, when I got home, right, you know, and the police brought me home and said, your son was just hit by a car. My parents are mad at me. You, you know, you, now we got to go to the emergency room. That's going to cost us money. I said, but I just, I mean, I, you know. I almost I, just died. I, just I did died. just die. As a matter of fact, I just did die. Right, you know. <laughs> I tried talking to um, the father at our church, where I was raised Catholic and what have you, and he told me that, um, that 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 could not be possible because it was only through, um, you know, the various ministers and preachers and, and, and nuns and people who had prepared for, you know, being the intermediary between me and God. I'm, that's the only way I could talk to God or have this experience like that. And so for many years, almost uh, six years after that experience, um, I really was unable to talk to anyone about it. So you kind of, you had to eventually, it sounds pretty quickly, had to kind of Push, tamp that down mm -hmm. to some degree, and then what happened? What, six years later, something else happened. Well, I, I ran into uh, who is still one of my best friends today, a fellow named Tom. Hmm. Um, I'd gone 150 miles south of Chicago. This all happened in the suburbs of Chicago, hmm. and went to the University of Illinois. And I met this fellow, Tom. And um, Tom was the first individual that I could talk to who uh, was just like, well yeah, well, this is what happened, and this mm. is the different planes that you experienced, and he was able to um, begin showing me different reference points and different reference materials, whether it was the Bhagavad Gita or the Vedas, or, you know, and started bringing me to a realization that um, what I experienced has been experienced by others, and here's what they had to say about it. It must have been a tremendous relief. Oh, it was, it was fascinating, and yet at the same time, the descriptions and kind of the ideas of what they, what they shared, these materials shared, didn't quite explain what I experienced. Hmm. And, it, and and did you remember? Have you so six years have transpired? That memory of what had happened during really fifteen seconds was so vivid that it had stayed with you that whole time. Right now, I can literally transport myself back to hmm. that experience hmm. and exactly what happened. Right now, as I'm speaking to you, I'm seeing the sequence. Hmm of what I thought, what I saw, what I experienced in that whole process. You know, I really I understand that because when I was about six or seven, I didn't know what it was called, but I lifted up out of my body. Right. And I can feel that now, Yeah. what that felt like, the ecstasy. Well, see, that's the thing. Now that I've written this book, the conversation is happening that many people have had that experience. Mm -hmm. And something, uh, some research that Ram Dass was telling me about, um, where 85% of all people Okay, and this was on a sample of like um, over 200,000 people, 85% of them, and so then they extrapolated out, but they say that 85% of all people have had some type of out-of-body or near-death experience, something that was out of the ordinary, where they were no longer part of their physical being. And of those 85% of all people that have had that, 95% of them never want to have that experience again. Hmm.